So we are going to talk about the metabolic response to stress or surgery or injury. Whenever we talk about when or whenever a patient undergoes injury or some kind of surgery, there are some changes which occur in the body. Now, what are the mediators of these changes? The mediators of these changes are basically two. One is neuroendocrine. Neuroendocrine. And the second is immune system. Immune system. All right. The one is neuroendocrine immune system, right? So what are the what are the neuroendocrine changes mediators? Let us talk about the neuroendocrine mediators are the neuroendocrine mediators are one is hypothalamus and pituitary, basically the anterior pituitary, the hypothalamus and the pituitary, usually the anterior pituitary. Okay, the anterior pituitary. Now what 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 is released by the hypothalamus? What is released by the hypothalamus? What does this hypothalamus release? The hypothalamus releases CRH, right? CRH. The CRH will act on the pituitary to release. Anterior pituitary will release ACTH. ACTH. Now this ACTH will act on what? What gland? Adrenal gland. The ACTH will act on the adrenal. Gland. The ACTH will act on the adrenal gland. Now the adrenal gland is going to release. The adrenal gland is going definitely going to release adrenaline at the same time it will also stimulate the adrenaline will also stimulate the release of counter regulatory glucagon there will be a release of glucagon so what are the things which are increasing in our response to stress what are the neuroendocrine responses to stress what are the neuroendocrine responses first of all there is release of cortical releasing hormone there is release of acth there is release of adrenaline and there is release of glucagon fine now what happens to the immune system this all, this whole, there are a few other mediators. We'll talk about them. So, what are the other immune? What are the immune system? What happens? See, both the innate as well as the adaptive immunity will come into action. Both the innate as well as adaptive immunity, adaptive immunity will come into action. Both the innate as well as the adaptive immunity will come into action. Now, what will happen? What 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 does what is the role of this immune response? They will definitely, as you said, will release the pro-inflammatory cytokines pro-inflammatory cytokines they will release the pro-inflammatory cytokines now what are the pro-inflammatory cytokines what are the pro-inflammatory cytokines interleukin 1 interleukin 6 interleukin and then tnf alpha 1 6 tnf alpha interleukin 1 interleukin 6 interleukin tnf uh, tnf alpha all right now as soon as the pro-inflammatory cytokines, see the purpose of immune system is to defend the body, to protect the body. Now, what happens as soon as the pro-inflammatory cytokines are released within hours, as soon as the pro-inflammatory cytokines are released within hours, within hours, what happens? Okay. It will stimulate the anti-inflammatory. That was pro-inflammatory cytokines. Now they're anti-inflammatory cytokines all right there will be anti-inflammatory cyto cytokines we'll release the anti-inflammatory cytokines okay the inflammatory inflammatory cytokines will be released now what are the anti-inflammatory cytokines you know the pro-inflammatory are the interleukin 6 interleukin uh interleukin 1 tnf alpha what are the anti-inflammatory cytokines that will be asked in the exam interleukin it's straightforward question from very and love interleukin 4 interleukin 5 interleukin 9 interleukin 13 interleukin 4 9 and 13 all right so these were the mediators of mediators of this inflammation mediators of this metabolic response to injury now talk about what how does this response occurs okay now how does this response occur what is the response what is the response actually now when we talk about the response to injury when we talk about the response to injury there is one very important model that should be understood which is known as the ebb flow model ebb flow model what is this ebb flow model ebb flow model this concept of ebb flow model was given by a scientist which is again asked in the exam the name of the scientist david Atberson. So when we talk about the response, what response occurs in response to stress or to surgery, we know the mediators of response is neuroendocrine and helium. Now the response that occurs is given by David Kurtzberg in his F-flow model. Now what is this F-flow model? If you understand in a graph, 
if you understand in a graph the f flow model says that initially there is a downward curve and then there is increased curve now what is this model def means this is the ebb phase this is the ebb phase this is the flow phase this is the m phase and this is the flow phase the f phase the f phase lasts for first 48 hours after injury the first 48 hours after injury all right that is in our patient what we discussed in the question the patient is still in the f phase after surgery till 48 hours the patient is in the f phase now what is happening in the f phase the f phase is a protective phase it's a very protective phase that means we basically want this is a this is a stage where we want to decrease the metabolism in the f phase there is decrease in the metabolism there is decrease in the metabolism of the f phase all right decrease in the metabolism so basically the body is trying to preserve the energy for the next recovery phase the body is trying to protect preserve the energy for the recovery phase so there is decrease in the metabolism in the f phase what happens in the f phase apart from decrease in metabolism there is decrease in the cardiac output all right there is also decrease in the body temperature these are the changes which occur in the F phase. They decrease in the metabolism, decrease in the cardiac output, decrease in the body temperature, which occurs within the first 48 hours, within the first 48 hours after surgery. The purpose of this is to conserve energy. The purpose of this is to conserve energy. Conserve energy. All right, you are trying to conserve the energy for future purpose. Now, after 48 hours, the patient will enter into the flow phase. Now, what is this flow phase? It starts from the three days and it will start till the, till the seven days. The three to seven days, the flow phase lasts. What happens in the flow phase? Flow phase is basically a flow phase is basically a catabolic phase. Flow phase is basically a catabolic phase. Now, what happens in the flow phase? When you mean by when you um, what you mean by catabolism? Now, the breakdown will start. The breakdown will start. All right, the breakdown will start. Now, breakdown of what? What will start? There will be increase. What will happen? The breakdown of what will start? There will be increased metabolism. So there will be hyper metabolism. There will be hyper metabolism. There is hyper metabolism. What will happen next? Yeah. There will be skeletal muscle protein breakdown. The skeletal muscle protein will undergo breakdown. Okay. The skeletal muscle protein will undergo breakdown. Next, the hepatic protein synthesis will increase it's not actually hepatic protein synthesis will increase the hepatic protein excretion uh, rate will increase the hepatic protein excretion rate will increase yes. and lastly there will be insulin resistance insulin resistance these are the different changes which occur in the catabolic phase okay now they will ask you when there is an mcq exam they can ask you everything so let us know a few details of what happens in the catabolic phase so the first thing we discussed was increase in metabolism the first thing that we decreased was increase in metabolism now they will ask you how much metabolism does increase how much metabolism is increased okay so they will ask you how much metabolism is increased you have to say it's 15 to 25 percent the metabolism what is the normal requirement of the calories the 15 to 25 percent increase occurs in the uh, calories okay that is what occurs in the any post-operative patient after 48 hours, how much metabolism increases? The metabolic needs increase by 15 to 25 percent. Okay, what happens next? next? The skeletal muscle protein breakdown. Now, see the skeletal muscle protein. The skeletal muscle protein which is present, the protein will break down into what? It will break down into amino acids, right? And then this yes, amino acids will break down into nitrogen. So the urinary excretion of nitrogen will increase. There will be increased urinary excretion of nitrogen. It can increase up to 20 gram per day, 14 to 20 gram per day. It can increase up to 20 gram per day, urine excretion of nitrogen. They will ask you in the exam, how much urinary nitrogen is increased? What is the increased metabolism and requirement after surgery? So after surgery, how much urine nitrogen can increase? It is 14 to 20 gram per day. All right. Now they will ask you the all the muscles in the body, all the muscles in the body, whatever be the muscle, all the muscles in the body can undergo breakdown. Which muscle don't undergo breakdown? Which are muscles don't undergo breakdown? Then if you talk about that, then it is the cardiac muscles. Which muscle don't undergo breakdown? This is the cardiac muscles. Remember, after fasting, after surgery, after stress, metabolic response, whatever be it, the cardiac muscles are spared. The cardiac muscles are spared. Okay. 
So if we move ahead, if we move ahead, they will ask you what is the mechanism of skeletal muscle protein breakdown. Then remember this: the mechanism is very simple. It is ATP dependent, ATP dependent ubiquitin pathway. ATP dependent ubiquitin pathway. I know these are very theoretical stuff, but if we if I don't if I have not related it to the clinical stuff, the thing would have been very very boring. So therefore, I tried to put a clinical discussion first, and then I moved on to study this uh, metabolic response because metabolic response is a very important question, very high yielding topic for MCQs. But you, you won't understand it unless you relate it to the clinical aspects. Then what happens after the skeletal muscle put down, uh, protein break, uh, skeletal muscle protein breakdown? The next is hepatic protein excretion increase. So normally, the albumin is the main protein which is synthesized by the liver. Albumin is the main protein which is synthesized by the liver. Normally, this albumin is excreted by the liver. Okay, and the excretion of albumin by the liver is known as TER. Write down the full form of TER: transcapillary excretion rate. Transcapillary excretion rate of albumin. Write down TER is transcapillary excretion rate of albumin. Now, this transcapillary excretion rate. Suppose the synthesis of protein is one gram. Transcapillary excretion rate is ten times. Okay, transcapillary excretion rate of protein is ten times. All right. normally this is normally in case of trauma or in case of stress whatever be it or surgery uh, whatever be it the transcapillary excretion rate increases the transcapillary excretion rate increases by three times they will ask you in the exam how much time the transcapillary excretion rate increases the transcapillary excretion rate will increase by three times in a post operative patient remember it very frequently asked question See, so the albumin level will decrease or increase? Decrease. So after yeah. stress, after metabolic response, after inflammation, whatever be the albumin level will decrease. So what do we call this? This we call this a negative phase reactant. Negative phase reactant. Remember, there are acute phase reactants are positive and negative. So there is something called negative phase reactants. They will ask you in the exam. What is the name one negative phase reactant? Because everybody remembers the positive phase reactants. The positive phase reactant. Example: Positive phase reactants are CRP, fibrinogen. Yes, They are the positive phase reactants. The rest, albumin is a negative acute phase reactant. Very, very important question in the exam. Here, we are talking about albumin. Albumin, albumin decreases. Why does it decrease? Why is a negative phase reactant? Now we understand. Okay. Now, what happens? Um, last was insulin resistance. Okay. Let me ask you. Uh, see, post-operative patient, there is increase in the blood glucose level. the blood glucose level will be increased even though the patient is starving the blood glucose level will increase because the patients are not able to utilize the glucose the glucose are not being utilized so apart from that the patient is also not able to utilize the glucose because there is insulin resistance now they will ask you after operation how long does the insulin resistance persist will the pers how long will this response of insulin resistance persist very important exam question this will persist for two weeks post operatively two weeks post operatively this insulin resistance of an, uh, after an operation will persist for two weeks post operatively all right will persist yes. for two weeks post operatively now the post operatively the patient is starving our patient we have talked about this patient the patient is starving okay now what what are the changes which occur let us understand what happens see um, how can you prevent this the patient is starving and the patient is requiring nutrition the patient requires nutrition so if the patient is starving post operatively post operatively if the patient is starving what will happen there will be utilization breakdown of glycogen into glucose the glycogen will break down into glucose All right there will be gluconeogenesis neogenesis also there will be conversion of fatty acids the uh, breakdown of fat into fatty acids and the fatty acids will break down into ketones these are the things which will occur in starvation now you don't want patient to develop ketosis we don't want patient ketosis. to develop yeah, into ketosis. ketosis so we want something we want to give something to the patient before that only so there has to be how do we prevent we are going to give we can prevent this by post of fluid maintenance post of fluid maintenance now what fluid do we give we give what the textbook recommendations 4% dextrose oblique we can also give 0.18% normal saline i don't think that's given in pharmacology now why 4% 4% is a recommendation but what is available in the market what is available to the hospitals is 5% 
five percent is available. So we give this fluids. How how many how how much fluid do we give? We give two liters per day. We give two liters per day. Now two liters per day. How do we give? Two liters per day. That means one fluid should be given over six hours. Okay, one bottle contains five hundred ml. One bottle contains five hundred ml. So this is the patient. This is the patient. You are giving one bottle of fluid which is five hundred ml. This bottle has to be given over. If you give one bottle, then it has to be given over six hours. Okay, then two liters yes. will be delivered one day. That's yes. how you regulate the fluid. Okay. Yes. Now they will ask you how much, how much glucose is provided by this fluid? How much energy is provided by this fluid? This provides eighty gram per day of glucose. This provides eighty gram per day of glucose. Eighty gram per day of glucose. That is sufficient for the maintenance of the nutrition, preventing uh, during starvation. Okay. Eighty gram of glucose per day. Yes. This is what this eighty gram is enough to prevent protein breakdown. This is eighty per day. Eighty gram. Eighty mm -hmm. gram is enough to prevent protect the from the catabolism. Okay. This is very very important topic that we have discussed. Metabolic response to injury. Metabolic response to stress and. post operative care along with the clinical discussion this whatever we discussed today uh, they are from general aspect of belly and love chapter 1 from belly and love nobody reads that if possible if possible if you get time must read the chapter 1 belly and love 